warm welcome to Every Creature Commission Television. Based here at Rose on Sea in the North Wales coast on a gloriously sunny afternoon. Our programme this afternoon is the Keswick Convention continuing and your preacher is Brian Mason. Wherever you are gathered, watching and listening, may the Lord himself be with you and grant the light upon his word. We'll start our meeting with a reading from the Epistle to the Ephesians, chapter 3, and verses 14 to 21 inclusive. For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might by his Spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height, and to know the love of Christ which passeth all knowledge, that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God, now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us, unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. Whatever your need is, Today, that need is met through Christ himself that we might have all the fullness of God in him. For in him dwells all the fullness of God. And that is available to us because everything that God has Every spiritual blessing is in Christ, in the person of Christ, through the Holy Spirit, the same Holy Spirit who indwelt Christ during his earthly ministry. Our hymn for today, which I will now read, is one which is to the glory of Christ. A hymn written by Isaac Watts. Come, let us join our cheerful songs with angels round the throne. Ten thousand thousand are their tongues, but all their joys are one. And we join this afternoon with those angels, and we worship and adore the one who sits upon the throne, the one who is exalted at the right hand of the majesty upon high. Worthy the Lamb that cry, died they cry, to be exalted thus. Worthy the Lamb, our lips reply, for he was slain for us. Yes, that is a personal salvation, knowing that Christ was slain for you and was slain for me. Jesus is worthy to receive 
honor and power divine. All oh, and blessings more than we can give, be Lord forever thine. Let all creation join in one to bless the sacred name of him that sits upon the throne and to adore the Lamb. Yes, that is the purpose of God, that all creation will join to worship the one who is upon the throne. Heavenly Father, Thank you that in Christ you have freely given all things that are necessary for life. For in Christ thy beloved Son is life, the very Creator who became the Redeemer and the Saviour. And thank you, O Father God, that as we look into thy word this afternoon that we will see no man save Jesus only and that in Christ we will see that you have everything, every spiritual blessing is, is in thy Son, not found anywhere else at all and that everything that is done this afternoon will be to thy glory and thy glory alone. For we ask it in the name which is above all other names, that of your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ himself. Amen. We're going to look at St. John's Gospel in chapter 11. A well-known chapter which speaks about Lazarus. And in verse 43 we read, And when he thus had spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. Those were words of authority, words of God himself, and words spoken in power, words which had to be obeyed because it was God himself who spoke them. No situation is beyond God. And in these days of great darkness and evil, then God is looking for those who are part of his church, and will see their position in Christ. Today we'll be looking at Christ during his earthly ministry. When he was there with all the authority of God, but yet during his earthly ministry, he was dependent upon the Holy Spirit to work through him. And in these days, they're no different. Yes, Christ may not be here physically on earth, but he's still on earth in the bodies of those whom he lives by his Spirit. 
that same Holy Spirit that indwelt him during his earthly ministry. And we will look to see that our position in Christ, that it is God himself who will work through those whom Christ indwells. Through his church, through those who are members of his church, the living stones, those who have been redeemed, those who have been forgiven, those who know that although once guilty sinners of now, through their trusting in Christ, through their trusting in the one who took their sin, the one who accepted the wrath of God, the one who took the judgment due to themselves, as they have placed their whole trust in Christ and accepted a pardon from him, that they are no longer guilty and that they can receive all the fullness that God has for them in Christ as a gift from Christ. But let us open this chapter up and see that there was a very special relationship between Jesus and Lazarus and his sisters Mary and Martha. And we too, in Christ, have a very special relationship in Christ himself because it has to be in the same person, Jesus, who met the very need of Lazarus and Mary and Martha, that as he met their need at that time, he will meet whatever your need is at this time, providing it is not a selfish need, but that which seeks for the glory of God and for the building of the kingdom of God. Now Mary was, uh, was one who knew Jesus in a very special way because she had a great need. She had seven devils. But when she had met Jesus, Jesus had cast out those devils. No wonder that on another occasion she broke an alabaster box and its contents were poured out. And as Jesus was in the house of Simon the Pharisee, Simon a very religious man had not provided water for Jesus to wash his feet. But yet Mary, the one who knew what it was to have had her sins forgiven, knew what it was to have had her life totally changed by Jesus, wiped his feet, those feet that she'd anointed, and wiped with her own hair. Oh Mary, yes, she knew what Jesus had done for her, and she would never forget that. And it 
so wonderful in the graciousness of God himself that Mary on that resurrection morning was the one that Jesus spoke to first. Man wouldn't have worked it out that way. God has. God's ways are so different to the ways of human thinking. If we're trying to think out with the, with the intellect, we will never get to an understanding of the ways of God because it's to the heart through the Spirit that God speaks to us. And Martha, the other sister, very different in personality to Mary. Martha the one who took care of the practical running of the home. But yet both sisters, in their own way, loved the Lord Jesus because he had become so real to them. And Jesus must have known them on a number of occasions, well acquainted with their home and had a deep, deep love also for Lazarus. Now, Lazarus became sick, we're told. And who should the sisters look to? But Jesus, they knew that no one else could meet the need of the occasion. But they had proved Jesus in the past. Possibly, they'd been at some of the miracles that Jesus had performed. When blind eyes were opened, deaf ears were opened the lame made to walk, wonderful occasions. Yes, and even if they had not been there, they would have heard. So it was not unexpected that they should send for Jesus to come in the moment of their great need. Because this was a tragic situation that they knew that should their brother die, that they were dependent upon him as the head of the household. Now when Jesus was told of the sickness of Lazarus, what was his reaction? There was no hurry with Jesus to immediately go there. Even though Bethany was only about two miles away from where he was. He was to take this sickness and ultimately death of Lazarus for one purpose, for the glory of God. And that he, too, Jesus, the Son of God, might also be glorified. And we're told that Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. That speaks very deeply to our own hearts. Because... Jesus, the Son of God, loved us so much that he gave himself, he took our place at Calvary. 
that is love. The very depths of the love of, of God himself. And even now as I speak, whatever your particular need might be, you might not know where to turn. You might be in despair, having no hope. But Jesus will not turn anyone away who turns to him. If you do not know Christ, the Lord Jesus himself, then ask him to be your saviour. And just like Mary, who knew the forgiveness of her sins, as you come as a sinner to the Lord Jesus and ask him to take away your sin and to cleanse you through his blood he will do so and you will come into a whole new life where the darkness of sin is taken away and you come into communication, communion with God. The very light of God will come into your heart. The very life of God will come into your heart. And whatever your need might be, you can bring it to him. And he will show you. He will meet you in your need. We're told that Jesus waited two days. And then he said well, to his disciples, yes, we will go again into Judea. And what did the disciples' reaction? It was to think in the natural that when they had previously been there there were those who were taking up stones to kill Jesus but we who are in Christ have to see our position in Christ which is so different to human thinking Seeing that in Christ, whatever the outward circumstances might be, that in him we will be above everything which seeks to come and to try and disturb us. For he is our peace. When you might be going through great testings. But when you take him and realize that he is your peace, or he is peace, peace is a person and it's found in Christ himself. Peace is that which comes not to the head, it comes to the heart as we have Christ and look to him in any situation which appears to be totally beyond us we ask him we say to him you are my peace and the peace of God according to his word says it's past all knowledge and that is so now Jesus said to his disciples our friend Lazarus sleepeth 
that I go that I may awake him out of sleep. And these disciples again, very much thinking, well, he's just asleep. But there was something far deeper to this. As Jesus said to them plainly, Lazarus is dead. And this was for a purpose. Earlier in his ministry, there was a young man, the only son of a widow, who was carried out on the way to be buried, carried out of the city of Nain, but with Lazarus. He had already been in the tomb for some days. For he tells us he'd been in the grave four days. There would be the body there already starting to decompose. But here the Lord of life himself, the very creator, the one who has the power both for death and for life, the one who has the power over death, yes, he could have prevented Lazarus from dying had he responded to the call of Martha and Mary. But no, this was for a greater purpose, because he was to declare himself as the resurrection and the life. As Jesus made his way to Bethany, word had gone before him, and Martha came out to meet him. And she said to him, Lord, now that is interesting in itself, that she acknowledged Jesus as Lord. Very different to the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the scribes. They could not see in Jesus what Martha saw. They had not seen in Jesus what Mary had seen. But the first word of Martha to Jesus was Lord. She acknowledged him as God. And she brought out that she knew that had Jesus been there, her brother would not have died because Jesus had the power of life and of death. And that even now, she had a deep faith within her that whatever Jesus was going to do, whatever he asked of God, then that would be granted. Here was a man so special to her that she acknowledged that whatever Jesus asked of the Father, he would do it because she had, she had seen that great miracle in her sister, that great change in her life. For a, her sister had been one who had been bound by the very devil himself. But through the authority of God in Christ, her sister had been completely set free and her life had been changed. Her life had become a new creation. 
Jesus' reply to Martha was that her brother should rise again. Now Martha had an understanding of what Jesus was talking about. She knew in the Old Testament that there was an expectancy for the righteous to be raised from the dead. We know that the Sadducees, they didn't believe in the resurrection, but there were many of the religious teachers who accepted that at some point the dead would be raised. Those who, who were seen to have been righteous, but righteous has been seen by the religious ones of the day, not the righteousness which Christ was bringing. For righteousness also is a person. We've no righteousness of ourselves. At best, we would only have the filthy rags of sin without Christ. We would have nothing to justify ourselves in the light of a holy God. Christ himself is the person of righteousness. And we only have righteousness when he indwells us. His life is within us. And Jesus to, to Martha came out with a new teaching. One, something that had never been heard before. Yet they, it came from the gracious lips of our God himself. When he said, I am the resurrection and the life, he that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? Shall never die. The body dies, yes. But the spirit, because we are spirits, God is a spirit. And the spirit will continue to live. And the spirits of those who are outside of Christ and everyone who is born into this world is not born into Christ. For they are the child of the devil. You might say, oh, how can that be? But the scripture is so clear that we need a second birth. The first birth will not take us to heaven, will not bring us to Christ, because there is a barrier there, the barrier of sin. The barrier that was brought into the hearts of everyone when Adam sinned. And the scripture is so clear on this that we need 
to be born again. And when we are born again, we are born into a new kingdom. And when we are in that new kingdom, then we know, without a shadow of doubt, because the Holy Spirit witnesses with our spirit that we have been born again of the Spirit of God and confirms within us because we have in, before we had darkness now we have the light of God within us within our spirit because he indwells us by the Holy Spirit and we have the peace of God within us and then we have the confidence that the words that the Lord Jesus spoke to Martha that we shall live both through time and eternity with him why? Because he indwells us. His spirit indwells us. So when at physical death and the spirit leaves our bodies, it is the spirit of Christ and we shall go to be with him because he has become our life and our life does not end at physical death. Martha saw what Jesus was talking about and she called her sister Mary and she too had that confidence in Jesus that he would do that which would bring great glory to God. For she also knew that had Jesus been there when her brother was sick that he would not have died Jesus was deeply touched and asked where Lazarus had been laid Because Jesus saw that Mary was weeping. And he sees those who are weeping today. Great tragedies take place. But we still live in this world. And even amongst those who are Christ. There is weeping at seeing what suffering their brothers and sisters are going through. Jesus weeps and he weeps through those too who are his to be identified with whoever it might be, wherever they might be. For the Holy Spirit, as he indwells us, identifies with those who are suffering for Christ. Jesus identified himself with Mary and Martha and can we 
We can feel it within ourselves. He groaned in the spirit and was troubled. And there are times when the Holy Spirit groans within us. Even sounds which cannot be uttered. For he knows where the need is. And he can only make intercession through those whom he indwells. Lord, come and see. There was Mary and Martha and many others who had gone along and been with, her, with them over the days looking to bring support to them to encourage them at the time of their need but they could not get to the very heart of the matter there was only one who could get to the heart of the matter and that was Jesus himself And we have these words, Jesus wept. And Jesus still weeps. Weeps over the suffering of those who are his. And weeps over when the church, his body, is not being submissive to him, is not letting him have his way, is not fully surrendered to him. Oh, that the body of Christ, the church, would get that new revelation, that fresh vision of what Jesus did for each member and be willing to be fully surrendered to all the will of God on an individual basis. Yes, there were those who were on their way to the tomb with Jesus. Again, they knew that Jesus had opened the eyes of the blind and had he been there, could have, could have healed Lazarus. Jesus went groaning in himself. Oh, the deep, the depths of what Jesus went through for each one of us. And the depths that he will bring to us with identification with himself. Oh, we can never be the same. When he comes, not in part, but the whole, and by his Spirit is able to show us all that there is in himself. And that as we grow, in him for it is a life of growing in him then he can take more and more hold upon us and do more and more in us and through us by the Holy Spirit when 
when this group arrived at the tomb. Jesus said what was seemed a quite remarkable thing to, me, to Martha. Take ye away the stone. That was what Jesus wanted to be done. Martha and Mary, about well, possibly thought, oh, we're just going along there and uh, praying, remembering their brother. But Jesus had something far greater in all of this. And Martha said, By this time he stinketh, for he have been dead four days. Had it been heard of before that someone, having been dead and in a tomb for four days, and here was a man, and more than a man, God himself, stood saying take away the stone so there was obedience and it's always when there is obedience that God will act we can stand in the way of God and his purposes it is when we hear within our spirits and obey, then the miracle will take place. When we have that inner witness within ourselves that God is saying something in particular to us and act upon that, then God will do his own work. There were so many in this, at this time who were in great need. Need of the Lord himself. And when the Holy Spirit lays upon us the needs of others in the body of Christ, then the Holy Spirit is able to do his work of prayer through us. Jesus had no doubt within him that the Father would hear him. Do we have that same confidence? And that confidence will come through knowing our position in Christ. And Jesus, this was his prayer. Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard very simple prayer. And I knew that thou hearest me always. No doubts there. But because of the people. Yes, he could have he brought Lazarus back from the dead without, without this prayer. But it was for the purpose of those who were there to hear. To hear that they may believe that thou hast sent me here. He was showing his full authority, the God-man. The Christ. The religious leaders could not see him as the Christ. Martha had seen him and Mary had seen him as the Christ. And now others were to see him as the Christ. And when he had spoken, 
he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. Lazarus could do nothing else but obey, because that was the word of authority, with all the backing of God behind it, and releasing the power of God into the situation. And he that was dead came forth, bound hand and foot, with grave clothes, and his face was bound about with a napkin. Jesus saith unto them, Loose him, and let him go. Yes, the bands of death were loosed, and there would have been no decomposing scene. Lazarus was restored to perfect health. And as we draw to clo a close today with this message, may we see that there is a position that God wants each of those who are in Christ to have. And that is that God gives all that he has to give through Christ because all the fullness of God dwells in Christ. And that it's having the fullness of God that behind Christ is all the authority of God. And God is looking that through those whom Christ is able to do all that the Father has asked to be done by the person of the Holy Spirit living through them in the same authority as Christ had whilst on earth, then the greater works can be done. The power of God can be released. But it's in Christ and in God's own wonderful way and plan he does this through those who are Christ's. What a transformation there will be when more and more who are the body of Christ can see their true position in Christ because then they are used as having the authority of God in Christ that what they are led in, their, in prayer it has that authority to pull down the strongholds of Satan has the authority to stand upon the works of the devil and has the authority and the power of Christ through them that as the Holy Spirit leads them guides them and prays through them then although there are great forces at work, darkness and evil all around contesting the work of God, contesting to try and bind the church of God from knowing its full position in Christ trying to frustrate the spread of the gospel, trying to delay the completion 
of all that needs to be completed for both Jew and Gentile in Christ. Trying to delay the return, the second coming of Christ. When God finds more and more who know their position in Christ, then Satan, the very devil, is put in his place because Christ has put him under his feet and in Christ and through Christ he is under the feet of those who are in Christ. I will be looking to move more into our position in Christ in these coming weeks because this is vital at this time. There is a, a lacking of an understanding of the believer's position in Christ. And we will look into the book of Ephesians and there we will see what God has done in Christ and has for each one of us in Christ. Thank you, O Father God, that you've opened thy word before us this afternoon and that you've shown that you have so much for each believer, for each one who is a living stone in the body of Christ. And that through these, these meetings, through these studies, thy people will, be, will grasp the full authority that you have for them in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ, that it's nothing that they can do of themselves, but everything which the Lord Jesus will do by his Spirit through them. Amen. Thank you for, for joining me this afternoon. I'll be back again tomorrow afternoon at the same time, 2.30 British time, when our program is the Protestant Reformation increasing. And we shall be continuing our study of the Acts of the Apostles. And this week we will be looking at chapter 4. The Lord bless you and guide you and take you deeper into himself for in Christ are all the riches of God good afternoon